undergoing another round of chemotherapy. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kate Sullivan. Rob has the night off. The Cardinal delivered the news himself in a column to Catholics in Chicago. CBS 2 Susanna Song is outside the Cardinal's mansion with more. Susanna. Well, Kate, Cardinal George is staying busy and active in spite of undergoing chemotherapy just this past week. He's been at home all day today in meetings. For many attending mass at Holy Name Cathedral, it came as a shock, the return of cancer in his right kidney. Your heart must feel heavy knowing that the leader of the church is not doing so well. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, I just found out, but yeah, it's unfortunate that his cancer came back and, and everything. And so um, just use this time to pray and, you know, reflect. He is such a beautiful, fine gentleman, and he truly is God's person. Asking for prayer during the season of Lent, Francis Cardinal George wrote to his parishioners in a church publication. This is a difficult form of the disease, and it will most probably eventually be the cause of my death. Having it come back again, how serious is it? The outcomes of patients with metastatic urine lining cancer overall are not great. Um, and the fact that it has come back is certainly, it is certainly grave. The Vatican responded saying, quote, the Pope has just been informed of Cardinal George's health condition and he is following it closely and praying for the Cardinal. A cancer relapse was unforeseeable back in December of 2012 when CBS 2's chief correspondent Jay Levine sat down with him after his first round of chemo. The big question is then, uh, is it working? and uh, the preliminary scans have been very, very hopeful. This time around, his treatments are more aggressive. He'll have chemo every couple of weeks for the next two to three months. He's staying active in spite of chemo just last week. Last night, he spoke to students at the University of Notre Dame, greeting his eager audience at the end, even smiling. And he has a full schedule ahead of him. He plans to be at the Presence Health Ball tomorrow night over at the Hyatt. And he's scheduled to speak at Mass on Sunday. And according to the Archdiocese, he's trying to change his chemo schedule so he can fly to Rome at the end of next month to be at the canonization of popes. So even though his health is failing, he's determined to do what he can. Reporting live in the Gold Coast neighborhood, Susanna Song, CBS 2 News. Kate. Okay, Susanna, thank you. Now to a developing story. This is CBS 2 News at 5. Good afternoon, I'm Rob Johnson. And I'm Kate Sullivan. A Skokie family coping with the death of their 8-year-old son is now the victim of a crime ripped off by a crook. Their son, Carter Vaux, was killed last year while riding his bike. Recently, the family received a state grant, money given to victims of violent crimes, but the check never arrived. CBS 2's Susanna Song explains where it went in this original report. It's one stop they make before work every day, to their son's grave. And that was it. And uh, he was gone. A little more than a year ago, eight-year-old Carter Vo was run over by a car, riding his bicycle on the sidewalk. Ah, devastated. 23-year-old Hanin Goma was charged with driving under the influence of drugs. She was sentenced to five years in prison. As this is Carter's room. I... Wow. Pretty much left it unchanged. Same bed, same toys. But Nuvo and his wife have created a wall of memories. Their son's smile livens the room. It's a uh, comforting wall. Sometime after they buried Carter, the Vos applied for a state grant to help pay for funeral costs. Nobody expects or, you know, plan for your, your, your children to, to, to die. So it was unexpected for us. In late January, because the Attorney General's office awarded the Vos $4,000. The check was sent out in May. Turns out that check never made it to Vos Skokie House. Instead, it arrived here at this apartment building on Chicago's southwest side. Someone got a hold of it and cashed it. Mm -hmm. Is this your signature? No. I usually sign new first before I vote. Clearly someone else signed it. Right. Upon investigating, we learned someone at the Court of Claims mistyped the number for the check, which led to the wrong address. If they actually did forge the name, then now we've gotten ourselves into some issues that will be very, very complicated for them in regards to potential criminal offenses as well. It basically made our family, me and my family, a victim again. Somebody took something away from us that wasn't theirs. Robbed of their child, of her brother, and the money spent for Carter's resting place. Susanna Song. CBS 2 News.
State officials tell Susanna the wrong address was already in their system because someone at the apartment applied for a grant as well, but they were denied. Meanwhile, Chase Bank says it held the stolen funds and closed the person's account. The check was sent back to the treasurer's office. Vo should get his money early next week. The family plans to file a police report and pursue criminal charges. Now to break. November 17th is a day people in Washington, Illinois will Exactly one week ago, lives changed in an instant. Many in the congregation were just arriving for Crossroads 11 a.m. service when they took cover at one of eight storm shelters. Never once had I ever been afraid of the darkness, but last Sunday, I was scared. Women started uh, singing little hymns like this little light of mine to try to keep the kids calm. A few hundred yards away from the church, the tornado knocked homes off their foundations. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid for you are close beside me. And this is their valley, just steps away from church, walking through all of this devastation, which they once called home. But there's always a hill to go up. Ann Wagger and her kids have yet to go back. Only her husband has seen the concrete slab that's left. I compared it to uh, attending a funeral for my family every day I was there. Joanne and Russ Petrie are finding hope in the rubble. We haven't lost anything. No, we, we really don't have a major loss. We don't. We, we, but we've you lost gained. a home. And That's a, a home is a home. No, our home is in heaven. The, uh-uh. This is earthly goods. They're relying on their church family and a higher power to get through. God has been with us throughout our lives. And this just reaffirms everything for us. In Washington, Illinois, Susanna Song, CBS 2 News. Since last Sunday, the church has served 30,000 meals and they plan to make Thanksgiving dinner. Morning to you, Susanna. You're in there, right? Hey, good morning, uh, Roseanne. Good morning, Chris. Yeah, we are live and mobile too, driving around the city looking for people who have to be in the cold. And quite frankly, there aren't a lot of people outside because it is just so darn right cold. And there's also a reason why I'm inside trying to stay in here as long as possible because it is nice and toasty inside. But I want to take you outside where, yeah, even just being out here for the last few seconds, it is pretty painful, very cold outside. And for some people, they make a living being outside, uh, such as Abel Esparza, who's working this truck. He works for a food distributor called Get Fresh, and he's been unloading food for Chipotle here in the loop. And uh, Abel, you said you've been out here since 10 o'clock last night. Yeah. How are you staying warm? Well, I gotta wear like a couple of la- layers of uh, clothes, jacket and undershirts, pants. I had like two of them. And today is exceptionally cold. Do you, can you tell the difference from oh, just yeah. even yesterday and today? Well, these couple of days are, is, is really being really cold. Right? And you make a living distributing and food and going from business to business. Yeah. You have to be in the cold weather, you know, you like it or not. You like it or not, yes, that's true. You gotta be in work or support your family. Support your family, yeah. yeah. So how many layers do you have? I'm just curious. Well, actually, I have uh, <laughs> I have this kind of pants right here, another ones and like the another one like the pajamas one. Yeah, the long underwear. Yeah, yeah. I have like three, and then uh, I have like the jacket and then another three shirts under under a long like two long sleeves and the other one regular one. Yeah, I can't believe you're right. three layers of long underwear. But you also can stay warm because you're staying active, right? You're, it takes yeah. a lot of energy. Yeah. Yeah, you, you stay like uh, kind of warm, but still, it's just cold. It's, it's freezing. All right, I won't keep you any longer. I know that you're cold and you need to keep working. Yeah. And I'm pretty cold, just like I said, for the last minute or so being out here. So I'm going to get back into mobile, too. Again, we're driving around the city this morning looking for people who have to be in the cold. We'll see you back in the next 30 minutes. See you later. Chris, go, Roseanne? Go stay warm, right? Flies. <laughs> Susanna? Well, good morning, Roseanne and Harry. Now that the cleanup is almost done, residents here are focusing inter trying to figure out what kind of food and supplies they need. Here at the United Methodist Church, every room is packed with supplies and donations. This particular room, you can see a lot of cleaning supplies from bleach to paper towel. Across the hallway, we have personal items and food. There's a lot of canned food in there. Also, across the hallway and down the hallway, we have medical supplies and school supplies. It is endless. This stuff is for you. And I don't want none of it to go to waste. 
So if you even if you don't want to do it. There's a lot of activity here at the church, a mix of volunteers as well as residents who are picking up food and supplies. The mayor of Diamond said she'll know more tomorrow how much government assistance this town will receive. Reporting live in Cole City, Illinois, Susanna Song, CBS 2 News. All right, Susanna, thank you. And though made all the difference for victims of the twisters. Let's go live to CBS 2's Susanna Song. She is in Washington for us tonight. Susanna. Well, Rob, it really is the small things and the small gifts that matter when your homes look like this. And today, hundreds of people got exactly what they needed to get back on their feet. I'm wearing my granddaughter's tennis shoes. All 71-year-old Jean Trevelyan had sneakers belonging to a child, borrowed since her only pair got ruined. I had my Sunday shoes on, so I do have dress shoes, but I worked on all day in the mud and I'm muddied and soiled after digging out of her home one week ago yesterday but today and it's wonderful <laughs> she's leaving here with brand new shoes one of many things she's thankful for I, don't, I haven't cried about the house at all God was with us and he has really taken care of us San Antonio shoes donated 3,000 pairs driven straight from Texas. We were stepping through like nails and all that stuff. And these shoes actually have a bunch of holes in them and all that. So I mean, just having a nice pair of shoes really means a lot. I'm so excited. Never had anything like this. Carol Vanderberg did not expect this. After all, her house is still standing. Wonderful. <laughs> it's, this is just like Christmas. Huh? But it's what this crippled 72 year old woman did that made everyone one in the room make sure she left with sparkling shoes. We've been hauling stuff back and forth all day yesterday and the day before and did you see my cane? It's got scuff marks in it because I, I hit the dirt like this to find jewelry for my friend. What a trooper, a 17 year old, 72 year old volunteer with a cane. You know, today I saw a lot of people, both the young and the old, pitch in to help. Many of the churches and organizations are now focusing on Thursday to make sure everyone has a hot meal and a place to go on Thanksgiving. Reporting live in Washington, Illinois, Susanna Song, CBS 2 News. Rob Kate. So simple, just a pair of shoes, but boy, are they grateful. Yeah. Song joins us from that school in West Inglewood. Good morning, Susanna. Good morning, Roseanne and Harry. Principal Alan Mather became an educator 30 years ago, hitchhiking to the Chicago Board of Education to apply for a job. And today he is a hero to so many students here. The graduating class alone earned $34 million in scholarships. A surprise visit from the mayor in the middle of the assembly to honor college-bound seniors the honor suddenly turns to Principal Alan Mather. Give up Alan Mather, the principal of this great school, a good hand for what he's accomplished here. For the first time, the Golden Apple Foundation selected a principal for excellence in education. Incredible, incredible teachers who are here. The, gra the great student. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! A little overwhelmed. Incredible students who are here every day. Um, you make this place a wonderful place to come. Principal Mather started this school nine years ago with 110 students, and today 1,100 students are enrolled with the largest Mandarin program in CPS and largest non-heritage Arabic program in the U.S. Even though more than 60% of the students here are part of the free lunch program, under Mather's leadership, this school has been ranked as one of the top 20 schools in the state. What we do so often is when we see children in poverty, we want to say, you know, this is what they need. We need to be paternalistic instead of saying we need to give people room to fail. We need to give people room to explore. We need to find new opportunities, and that's what we do. Inspired by a former teacher, Mather is now planting seeds in his own students, and they, too, have found success. He's honestly the best principal that I could ever have, and, like, he really pushed us to do all of this. And where are you going to college? Um, University of wisconsin Platteville. The Golden Apple awarded Mather $10,000, and he plans to use most of that money to create some sort of a creative, innovative math and science lab right here at his school. Reporting live in Englewood, Susanna Song, CBS 2 News. Roseanne.